The garter stitch short row heel is a wonderful heel. Not only is it beautiful and very neat in the corners, it's strong, elastic, a thick fabric with both vertical and horizontal elasticity. And the secret of this heel is to make it over more than half of the round. The problem with peasant or afterthought heels is they're usually put in over half of the tube that forms the sock. And when you only open it by half, it really is quite resistant to bending, putting a lot of stress on the two corner points. But if we enlarge the hole, A little bit, taking the total number of stitches in our heel up to 60 or 70 percent, it's a lot more willing to bend and it gives you a more roomy space for your heel. It's very easy to work out your own calculations as to how many stitches you will need in your heel. You take a total number of sock stitches, multiply it by either 0.6 or 0.7, or go somewhere in between. And that will give you how many stitches you need in your heel. So the 60 stitches in the sock, if there's 42 in the heel, that leaves 18 for the remainder of the sock. So we have to position the heel at the back of the sock. So 21 stitches before the back of the sock is nine stitches away from the top of the sock. And that's all you need to work out. So position yourself at the top of the sock and work the additional number of stitches in your working yarn. Then you're ready to put in your heel. And this heel can be made toe up or top down. Make your calculations and put your future heel stitches onto two needles. You'll need to put them onto two needles initially because you're working on more than half the round of the sock. For filming purposes, I'm keeping this to just 16 stitches, so I'm able to put them all onto one needle. You'll be able to amalgamate your heel stitches all onto one needle as you go further along with your heel. I've put the rest of my sock stitches on a holder. You can put them on a spare needle, put them onto a circular needle so that the points flop down out of the way. And there is my working yarn. There's my center back position, and I've knitted up to the heel position in my working yarn and you leave the working yarn attached. Now, even if you're doing a matching color heel, always use a different piece of yarn to work the heel. That makes this heel removable if you wish, and it also gives you the neatest possible corners. So to create the first neat corner, if you wrap the new yarn around the old working yarn and knit your first stitch with your heel color. And now you can weave the tail in at the back of the work. So I've lifted the tail up and I'm going to knit underneath the tail. This can also be done with a darning needle, but the important thing is that the new color is wrapped around the old working yarn. And as this is a sock, I will weave it in further than I would normally weave it in other circumstances because it's going to be stretched and pushed and pulled and the yarn is probably a super wash. So your first row of your heel is simply linking it to the old working yarn and knit until one heel stitch remains. When you have one heel stitch left, we're going to do a short row with an ordinary wrapped short row. So we're going to borrow that stitch, take the yarn around the needle tip and replace it. I call that a borrow, wrap and replace. And when you replace it, the yarn should be around the throat of that stitch. Turn the work around, keeping everything up snugly together because we don't want a big loose piece here. We can then knit across the next row. So we've wrapped the first one of our heel stitches at the far side. 
as you get to towards heel stitch number one, you knit until that only remains. Then we borrow, we wrap, we turn the work, we can't replace it yet unless you have a needle handy, and then we replace it again with the yarn around its throat. The next row, we work one stitch less than the last row. Every row is one stitch fewer. As you get towards the far end, we're going to stop one stitch short of where we did last time. So I'm going to knit that. And it's the turn of this stitch now to get wrapped. And we can see that this one has already been wrapped. It's got a strangle around its throat. So we borrow, we wrap, we place the stitch, turn the work, make sure we don't leave too much slack in there, and knit back to the other end. On the last wrong side row, we wrapped heel stitch number one. This time it's the turn of heel stitch number two. So borrow number two, wrap him and replace him and turn the work. Now, every time you're about to embark on a right side row, you should have the same number of wrapped stitches on either side. And the method that I use to help you differentiate this, because this heel is going to be quite wide um, on a normal size sock, uh, so it might be helpful to put the stitches that have been wrapped out of the way. I use what I call parking needles. So I'm just going to slip my needle out of there and put my two wrapped stitches on this needle. So this needs to be lightweight, smaller, and I'll put the other two on right now. And you can use a cable needle, but I'm tucking those into the fabric so that I don't accidentally knit them or the needle falls out. So now all I'm operating on are the ones in the middle. So every row is the same. One stitch fewer than the last row. So it's the last stitch on this needle that needs to be wrapped now that I've got the parked ones out of the way. So borrow, wrap, and park the stitch. And then we can forget about it for the time being. I'm at the end of the wrong side row now. Borrow, wrap, and park. And at the start of each right side row, it's a good idea to check you've got the same number of wrapped stitches on either side. Remember that this first stitch will never change colour. It's going to be the original colour of the sock. But that doesn't matter, it's just fine. So we've got three wrap stitches on this side, three wrap stitches on this side, and I'm going to keep going until I only have an inch of stitches left in the middle. Unless, of course, you have super pointy heels. I've taken this heel down till six stitches remain. It depends on the gauge of your yarn, how far, how far down you go. And so I've got six stitches on my needle here and I've got five on each parking needle or five wrapped stitches on each side. And it's always important to notice that your the sum of your parking needles plus what you have on there should total what you had originally because we're not decreasing anything. If, if the numbers are different, you've dropped something or you're miscounting. So from this point, we're now ready to go up the increasing side of the heel and that will be next week's instalment.